Well, you know, those are elections, so you can never predict the results. Uh, I just know that we've never been um, so much on the way to the second round. And, you know, if, if you look at the general political landscape now in France, you've got Emmanuel Macron, our current uh, president, uh, who's been giving, you know, uh, gifts, uh, like fiscal tax gift to the richest over the last uh, five years, for example. Then you've got sort of 50 shades of the far right with Valérie Pécresse, with uh, Eric Zemmour, uh, with Marine Le Pen. And then actually, if you're left wing, if you want to increase minimum wage, if you want to change the constitution, if you want to tackle climate change, your only chance to get to the second round is with uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. So that's really what's at stake for the moment in France. And for sure, uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon has a chance uh, to get to the second round. And therefore, you know, the debate for the second round would be completely different. Would not be at, you know, pointing the finger at uh, um, refugees or like the far right is doing at the moment or cutting public services like all of the right wing candidates are proposing. Well, this would be two completely different visions with one on one side, Emmanuel Macron and on the other side, a more progressive social and ecological with Jean-Luc Mélenchon. But one thing that we see, though, as some critics still uh, uh, for Jean-Luc Mélenchon, his past views on Vladimir Putin, some past comments showing some admiration, if not at least you could say complacency, and talking about how the West is the aggressor. Even very recently, uh, when we could see the forces of uh, the Russian forces gathering around the Ukraine border. Um, how damaging is this for Jean-Luc Mélenchon? It seems to be a little bit in damage control over the past few weeks to kind of uh, try to explain some of these views. Well, that's the story that some of the other left-wing candidates are trying to put together to try to accuse us. And that's, you know, it's sort of a desperate strategy of some of the candidates to just survive, um, to, 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 to criticize on fake grounds uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. So let's be clear once for all. You know, uh, Vladimir Putin is not a friend. Vladimir Putin is the aggressor. Vladimir Putin is violating international law with the attack in Ukraine. And that's why we've been standing, for example, uh, for very strong sanctions against Vladimir Putin, against the Russian oligarchs. One of the calls that we've been doing at the European level is for the European commissions to um, ask for a public registry of uh, what the uh, oligarch, Russian oligarchs own in tax sevens because if you want to take what they own well you have to know where they are and now for now they're just like hidden in in tax seven so you know i, I could go on for long uh, on you know everything that we want to stop this war for the russian troops to withdraw from ukraine but i think I don't, we don't have to justify ourselves for being uh, Putin's friends, why we've never been Putin friends. Actually, our friends in Russia are the ones that are going to jail because they're criticizing the war. All the ones we've been criticizing um, the Russian regime for not being democratic over the last few years. So I'm quite confident that the French people at the end of the day, they will know what our positions are and they will know that we stand on the side of peace for, for, for all the time. And this is also why we calling for a de-escalation um, of that conflict. Otherwise, we might, you know, end up with a global war, and I don't think anyone wants that at the moment. But it's not just an argument from other candidates in this campaign. I mean, the position, for example, for Mamie Peace for Lian Soumi that you, you're part of, uh, in December you abstain on a resolution on the border situation uh, of the Russian forces gathering around Ukraine. In, just in February, mid-February, you abstained uh, when it came to voting a, a support package, an economic support package for Ukraine. So it looks like your position has been evolving slightly, but there's still some damage there from the past no. history of, of the Ansumi um, political group and the, and the view it has of, of Russia and Vladimir Putin. No, it's, it's, it's just that you don't know what we're talking about there. So let's, let's uh, be clear. What we voted, for example, in January was not a financial uh, support and package to Ukraine. It was a loan under condition, under condition that have been put by the IMF, that are macro, what we call macro conditionalities, and that, um, you know, ask the Ukrainian state to actually make some cuts in their public services. We left wing people. We don't want loan with conditions. And this is why, you know, we've been putting together an amendment that ask for 
a direct financial support, so a direct aid, not a loan, so that the Ukraine will not have to pay it back. And guess what? The right wing has been opposing to it. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of hypocrisy. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm telling you that, but I, I, it, it's also because we've been asked by several journalists, I'm tired that this war is kind of used in instrumentalized. It's, it's, it's serious enough that we should not be, you know, putting the finger at us and, and, and say that we've not been supporting. Sorry, but we've been the ones supporting when we're asking for direct financial aid to Ukraine. We're supporting Ukraine when we're asking as well that there's no discrimination of refugees that are crossing the borders. We're asking Ukraine when we want um, uh, tougher sanctions on, on Russia. We're helping Ukraine where we're calling, when we're calling for a ceasefire and we're calling for the Russian troops, troops to, to withdraw. So, I don't, I don't think there's anything that we have to, um, to, be, to be sorry for. I don't think there's anything that has evolved in, in, in our position. And we've been very clear, but we have to be precise on what we're talking about. Can I ask you about NATO then? Because that's something, a topic where uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon has been very consistent on and from, from very early on in his political career uh, saying that France should exit uh, NATO and even, but still now, despite the current situation, uh, talk, just 10 days ago, Jean-Luc Mélenchon talked talk about NATO as a use, useless organization that causes tensions um, and he wants France to be non-aligned. So how does that work in the context where we see uh, this war just at the border of the EU and we see a lot of um, countries that actually have now want to join NATO, even though up until now they were not so sure? Well, you know, NATO is an old-fashioned uh, military alliance uh, that is dated from the Cold War. Uh, you know, I'm 32 years old. I'm, I'm born right at, at the end of, of the Cold War. And this is back from a time where there were two blocks. And I don't think we live in a time anymore where there are two blocks and when we need to be aligned on one specific block. We have a tradition in France um, that is dated from the General de Gaulle, so right after the Second World War, so it's, it's quite old actually, that, that um, calls for non-alignment. To be independent, we don't have to depend on one block. It doesn't mean that we cannot have specific alliance to deal with specific issues, but you know, this, this kind of race uh, to increase um, our expenses in, in, into the army and um, I, don't, I don't think that's actually the solution to, 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 to keep the peace worldwide and I don't want to be in a line, for example, of uh, Erdogan in Turkey that is part of the NATO. So we've always been calling for non-alignment which means that we don't choose a block but it doesn't mean that we're neutral in that specific case we're the one that um, that should be trying to find a solution with Russia to to bring them back around the negotiating uh, table and to put pressure on them and I think that's the only way rather than escalating further the conflict that could lead to a global conflict that once again I don't think anyone should should uh, uh, want this.